As we turn to a description of eukaryotic transposons, watch for similarities to the prokaryotic transposons, IS and TN elements, etc. Type 1 transposons, or retrotransposons, move or jump by transcription of RNA at one locus, at a home locus you can call it, followed by reverse transcription and integration of the cDNA into DNA regions at different locations. As we'll see, retrotransposons may be derived from or even the source of retroviruses, which also excise from and integrate into DNA. The type 2 transposons are DNA transposons. These move by one of two mechanisms, either cut and paste or replication. So cut and paste transposons move by leaving one locus and integrating into another. Transposons that move by a replicative mechanism are essentially copied and the copies integrate into new target site DNA, leaving the original transposon in place. By the way, mu is an example of a replicative type 2 transposon in a prokaryote. Okay, this table summarizes different kinds of transposons with well-studied examples, uh, their distribution, and some of their known properties. You may wish to have a copy of this table in front of you when you study the different examples to be presented here. And this table highlights the fact that in eukaryotes, transposons can range from as little as 3% of a bacterial genome to as much as 45 to even 95% of eukaryotic genomes. In fact, at 4% and 6% of the genome, transposons in Drosophila, the fruit fly, and rice, respectively, are at the lowest proportions. Given that most higher organisms have way more DNA than they need to encode their genes, a question that most fascinates me is why do the genomes of some higher organisms seem to tolerate even make use of transposition, and others not? It's like the fruit fly has opted out, resisting the temptations of jumping genes. There's no answer to these questions yet.